Yo, 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 what's going on, everybody? How you doing? You know who this is, the chosen one, Gabriel Skywalker from the DFS Club. And you're going to know who this is pretty soon, guys. We got Bronco from the DFS Club. We're going to feature him in today's video, and um, we're going to call this How I Won Over 100K on DraftKings in One Day. How's it going, man? Good, brother. Good? Real good. Right on, man. So, yeah, so he's a he's a member of ours. Um, he constructed a lineup. Actually, you played five, right, in this particular tournament? Uh, three. And what was the max entry in this one? Uh, 150. So you mean to tell me you took <laughs> down playing only three lineups against people that are playing 150-plus lineups? Uh, yeah. Yeah. That yeah, is amazing, bro. That is amazing. So those people that say it can't be done, it can be done. Um, I used to be one of those people. <laughs> you know what? That's what we do in the club. And you know, you hear me always talk about on my videos and stuff. I'm like, we can beat these sharks, you know. Um, but it's 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 the hand pick lineups, and then when you take down like you did, you can just be like, what? You know, like this is so much better. So what was your thought process on this particular day? Because I'm showing here the one that you won. You took down the big tournament. You won 60, 60, over 60 K. Um, and then yeah. you end up over the full day. You ended up over a hundred K, correct? Yeah. Um, nice. Actually that day um, I entered three lineups. I like, I usually do about five lineups in the smaller like quarter and the quarter entry, the 50 cent, the dollars. I usually do like five to 10 lineups on there. Um, and my bankroll only had 60, 60 bucks left. So I was like, what the hell? I'll just, I'll just enter three times in the, tw in the, in the big one, see what happens. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's, I decided to do three, three lineups that day. Uh, as far as the thought process, I had been wanting to do a pacer stack for a long time, but uh, I know we talked a while back uh, about uh, using the optimizer and I screwed, I donated a lot of money by uh, waiting until the last minute with trying to do the optimizer and fixing my lineup. So um, shortly before I started doing my handpicked lineups, I stopped using the optimizer, but um uh, but yeah, I just entered these three lineups. I did my pacer stack that I had been wanting to do for a while, and um, that was pretty much it. I mean, I I have a I did a screenshot of of who my locked players were, and I had Karis Levert, uh, Malcolm Brogdon, and O'Shea Brissett, who uh, who had been on a tear up to that point. So I had those three locked, and I wanted to run it back with a Detroit player that day in particular. So the only one I really trusted was Mason Plumlee. Um, so that was my four-player stack from the Pacer game, and I just kind of built from there. That's, that's beautiful. So let me ask you this. <clears throat> You're talking about the optimizers and all that stuff, like, that's another thing I was wondering. You being a former optimizer player, I never really have been. I use the optimizer like draft dashboard just to do research. Like I don't use it to construct lineups. Um, what happens like five minutes before lock, you got 150 lineups in and then someone's a late scratch or something like that. How do you like get in there to all of your 150 or so lineups and, and get them out? Is there a way to do that? Um, well, the one I use is, well, the one I used, I kind of still use it, uh, Roto Grinders. It allows you to take out all the players, but then you have to rerun the optimizer. And like I said, I was only doing anywhere from five to 20 lineups. And uh, like when someone gets scratched, you have to take them out and rerun the, the, the optimizer. But you go through you kind of have to go through and check all of them because if they throws a player like uh i'm trying to remember who it was that it tried to throw in there for me like a solomon hill or something <laughs> you know you got to go in there and, and change it but uh that's kind of what would get me I, I would get in there and i would see a bunch of lineups that i didn't like and i would try to take out all the players and you know 
time would run out and I would have to save, try to save the rest of my lineups from, uh, from, you know, the later games that were still available. Man, that sounds like, I mean, for, for me as a provider, I mean, let alone doing the podcast and getting lineups ready and all that stuff. And then worrying about that, I could never do that, man. Um, yeah, three lineups, bro. That's that's insane. So I'm sure what everybody's going to want to know is, what are you going to do with all this money you want, man? How much? <laughs> wait, first of all, first of all, how much did you spend that total bit? Um. Well, the three lineups were sixty dollars, and I think with all the smaller lineups that I entered, it was another. Um. Uh, I think sixty. Sixty-eight fifty is is what I usually spend on the smaller lineups. So one hundred and twenty, one hundred and thirty bucks. Uh, that was a pretty good return. <laughs> That's a really good return and investment. Um, what do you, what are you gonna do with the money? Man, I know it's not enough to retire on or nothing like that, but man, it's over a hundred G's. Like I'm sure people are gonna, be, you know, they want to hear from these winners, like lottery winners. Like what what are you gonna do with your money? Uh, well, it's been sitting in my, in my account for a while. I, uh, you know, I got to talk to the boss and see, we've been kind of talking and discussing, seeing what we wanted to do. And, um, as of this point, we decided we we're going to move into a bigger, bigger place, <laughs> get a bigger house, man. Nice. Man, I love so when you say plan. that's the plan at this point. Yeah, <clears> man, <throat> right on. I'm It'll sure be a pretty she, nice upgrade. But- yeah, and you're and you're you're in a cheaper state than I'm in. So I mean, I'm sure you can do that. But yeah, you're making the right decisions, bro. That's awesome. Um, I think I lost it did, for a second. Oh, did you? You you all right? Yeah. You, okay. You're back now. You're back Ooh. now. I can't hear you. Okay, so every day, um, everybody that watch that does DFS, they know who Osmo is. So every day they when they do their uh, their live before lock or whatnot, they'll feature. They'll look into the previous day who won the big tournament what was it like to hear to see them talk about you and seeing you at the top of the list <laughs> that was uh that was pretty cool man I, I never really i never really thought of myself or thought that i would be in on on anything like that so it was pretty trippy seeing that seeing how sour they were and <laughs> you know talking about my lineup that i put in there so, and I am I am going to get a TJ McConnell jersey, just to to remember this day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I totally get that. I mean, yeah, those guys play three hundred lineups a piece, man. So I'd I'd be a little sour too if I lost to someone who only played three, on top of it, <laughs> right? Yeah. And and for those of you that don't know, Bronco was very generous. Um, he donated a yearly package, two yearly packages. Two six-month packages to the viewers of DFS Space and and my channel uh, for the people to win those packages. So again, thank you very much for for doing that. That's very uh, very nice of you to be uh, so great. You know, to give a little bit back to everybody, man. How'd that feel? Yeah. It's my pleasure, man. I, that was that was like one of the first things that went through my head. Not necessarily to donate to you guys, but you know, the first thing that goes through probably anybody's head that wins that that amount of money is to, you know, help their parents out or, you know, pay off this or that for their parents. So, you know, there's just stuff like that that was going through my head. And and I was like, you know, you guys are the cheapest in the industry and you get uh, the most bang for your buck. So I was like, let me let me go ahead and give back to the club and let me give back to the family. So it felt pretty good to do that. Yeah, man, you made you made a lot of people happy with that. Um, a lot of people were just happy for you in general on the Discord, man. When they saw you won all that money, you, Kumquat, Hard Hitter. I mean, we've had a lot of big winners, but yours was definitely the largest. Um, yeah, a lot of people. I mean, everybody in there was so happy for you, man. I got I got personal messages from other members like, you know, I'm so happy for him. Um, so just real quick, and then we're gonna we're gonna cut it. We're going to, we're going to, I'm going to let you go on this nice Saturday afternoon. What advice do you have for people like me, for other people that play three to maybe three to five lineups in a big tournament? What advice do you have for them? 
Um, well, with this lineup, it was – man, it was my gut. Like I told you uh, earlier, I had been wanting to play a pacer stack because it was just – it was something – Something in my gut was telling me, man, that's it. I, I got to play a pacer stack, and and I don't know if I'll win it, but I have to play one. So I guess the the main advice I can give is if there, there's something that's bubbling in your gut, man, just play it and don't let anybody talk you off of it. And you can build from there. Like I had a four-player stack, and on some advice of, of you know, people from the, from the family and – um you know, a couple of other videos that I saw, I just started plugging in, um, plugging in players from there. And the actual last player that I plugged was was TJ McConnell. And uh, on a normal day, I wouldn't play him at all. But on this day in particular, there was nobody around him that 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 interested me more than him. So I was I just shot shot my shot. <laughs> And made it, but yeah, just go with your gut, man. Go with your gut and build from there. Yeah, you got TJ McConnell. I see it two percent, and that always helps. Yeah, yeah. I, I looked at his history when I was plugging my last player in. I looked at his history. I definitely didn't expect a forty burger from him, but I was like, I can definitely get anywhere from twenty, you know, twenty six to thirty from him. You know, because he was shooting fairly well. And uh, just putting up some, you know, some peripheral stats up too. So that was my shot that I took, and it paid off. <laughs> yeah, you know, you have to right in these in these tournaments, you have to take some shots. Um, uh, so basically, you had your core, you had your core. You decided you were gonna you were gonna try and stack indie. You always mm -hmm. wanted to, and then you just filled in the rest by watching our videos, by watching other people's videos, um, which yeah. I recommend you guys do anyway. You know. Um, yeah. And that was it, huh? Yeah, uh, the three three play, three players uh, pacer stack, and then you know uh, run it back with one one player from the other side, um, and then after that, I I focused on one of the later games. Uh, the late game I chose was the um, I'm trying to remember. Hold on, let me pull it up. I believe it was the Houston. I know I took a Houston piece that night. Yeah, you got uh, Kelly Olenek on here. Yeah, that was another one that like everybody was talking about, and he was like on fire. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, so it was the Denver Houston Nugget game. Um, there was a video that I sh that I saw that had talked about PJ Dozier. Mm -hmm. So I plugged him in. That was my next player after my four player stack, and then I put uh, Michael Porter Jr., who had been. I uh, can't remember if it was you or Space that talked about him on their video. And y'all said that he was like, you know, hitting 30, at least a 30 on every game up until then. So he's the next person I plugged in. And uh, I'm trying to remember the other guy, but, you know, the last guy ended up being uh, TJ. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I stacked the Houston-Denver game and the, the Pacer game. Yeah, and I see that I'm looking at the own ownership. So you don't have anybody higher. I mean, you have Brissett, who is 40%. So, I mean, nothing. The only really low-owned guy you had was TJ McConnell. I'd say Michael Porter Jr. Like we always say, he's like the safest player, right? 30-point 30, 30 uh, floor. He was 10%. Yeah. But other than that, I mean, not too shabby, man. Not too shabby. Um, yeah. I, I, luck was on my side that night for sure, man. Sometimes you need a little bit of luck, even in DFS. You can know you can do research for 12 hours straight, as I can tell you. And then you can, like I say in the podcast, man, you can you can rest assured as long as you feel like you've made the right plays, you pick the right players regarding matchups, history, all that stuff. <laughs> if it don't work out, it don't work out. You know what I mean? But I don't right. ever want people to go back and go, oh, man, why did I play those guys? You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, what was it? I was going to say something. It'll come to me before it ends. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just going to say, um, as far as like your uh, your bankroll, you staying disciplined, or are you uh, you just you still doing your normal thing, like sixty? Would you say sixty something dollars a day? Yeah, uh, 
Well, to be honest, I, I'm going a little higher than usual, but I, I kept um, I kept five thousand in my bankroll. So I'm doing five to ten entries, but I added the the twenty uh, the big contest in there with my bankroll. So, but now you know now that's the, that it's the end of the season, I'm putting like three entries in each one up until yeah. playoffs. Yeah. So tomorrow, I guess tomorrow it ends. So I'm mm -hmm. I'm putting no more than like sixty bucks in. Yeah, so that's what I did. I've I've taken down big tournaments twice this year. Pretty much the same thing you said. I think we're on the same page here, man. You had your core, you're hell bent on your core, and then you know you just built around that. And I, and I think a lot of people get away from that. So I think yeah. that's very helpful hearing it from you also. Um, and don't mm -hmm. let people talk you off of certain players. Right. Uh, oh, that that was the other thing I was gonna I was gonna say was yeah don't don't. If you feel your gut for your core, don't change it. You know, keep it on there because at the end of the day, if you end up losing it, you're like, well, at least I went with my gut. <laughs> I was wrong, but it was me that was wrong. So, you know, that that's always a peace of mind for me, at least. Right. And, and you know, in the club, people will, will give their – we have what's called our spidey sense, right, and our uh, low-owned plays that we think are going to go off. And nobody nobody gives anybody a hard time about their, their picks, you know. We're just like, all right, cool. Hopefully they go off, you know. That's yeah. what it's all yeah. about, man. Um, so that's going to do it guys. Hopefully you got a little insight here, uh, from Bronco. He was kind enough to come on here and, and share his thoughts and, um, his time to shy, man. I, I wanted to feature him on the video. Anybody in the club on the video that takes down like this, um, it's us against them, man. It's us against the sharks. And when we win, it's the glory, bro. It's the glory yeah. that I love to see. Um, absolutely. Any, any last thing before we get up out of here, man? Uh, Want to shout anybody out? Anything? Well, the the video that got me on to, um, on to uh, PJ Dozier. I don't know if it's all right for me to shout out to him. Yeah. Uh, he, it was actually DFS Noah that got me on onto that play. So yeah, shout he's out a friend him. of mine. Yeah, he's a friend of mine. Yeah, he's a, he's a good he's a good cat. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, shout out to him. Shout out to the family and. Um, uh, everybody out there, man, let's get this bread. That's I want right. to see somebody else. I want to see somebody else take this big contest down. <laughs> Bro, I guarantee you will in the playoffs. I guarantee it's going to happen. Somebody in the family is going to do it. Hopefully it's you again. Hopefully, it might, hopefully it might be. you know, you never it know, man. Be. You just got to yeah, be patient. From the family, I'll be happy. <laughs> yeah, right, right, exactly. All right, man. Thank you so much for your time, Bronco. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you sharing everything you've done. You've given back. And, man, I'm just so happy for you, the boss. Man, you guys can upgrade. This is what it's all about. So, like he says, guys, let's get this bread. Don't take shit from nobody. Bronco and I are out. Thank you so much, man. Peace.